Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's September 20th, 2024. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy presented by Diamond Scientific. First things first, and as always, let's take a quick look at the stock market and five stocks on the move this week within the world of waste, gas, and energy. As of September 20th, 2024, Renewable Energy Group is currently trading at $61.50 a share. Clean Energy Fuels Core is up to $2.66 per share. Opal Fuels Incorporated now sits at $3.76 per share. Total Energies is now trading at $66.30 per share. And Borlex Incorporated ended the day at $25.48 per share. But first up in the news, according to the RIN report released by the EPA this past week, 2.06 billion renewable identification numbers were generated under the Renewable Fuel Standard in August, down from 2.07 billion generated during August of last year. Total RIN generation for the first eight months of 2024 has reached 16.49 billion, this up from 15 billion. 0.49 billion generated during the same period of 2023. And speaking of tax credits, according to a news release, Givo Incorporated sold about $20 million in investment tax credits through the Inflation Reduction Act generated at the company's Northwest Iowa Renewable Natural Gas Plant. The sale of the credits is expected to generate about $17 million for the company after fees, which the company said has generated cash flow for the plant that the company expects will continue to expand RNG production. According to the same release, the company expects to make similar income as a result of the 45Z clean fuels production tax credit that has yet to take effect, waiting only for the Biden administration to release guidance on the credits. And next, Toronto-based Woodland Biofuels Incorporated is investing $1.3 billion in the port of South Louisiana to establish a renewable natural gas plant and an ultra-green hydrogen facility. The new facility will be located at the Global Plex Multimodal Facility at the Port of South Louisiana. The company expects to permanently remove hundreds of thousands of tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere annually and store it safely underground. Phase 1 of the project is expected to permanently remove 210,000 metric tons of CO2 annually, while Phase 2 will remove approximately 660,000 metric tons of CO2 per year. Ultimately, the project is expected to be one of the largest carbon dioxide removal projects globally, permanently removing millions of metric tons of CO2 from the ecosystem. Woodland Biofuel CEO Greg Natal said, quote, Woodland is thrilled to announce that we plan to build, right here at the Port of South Louisiana, the world's largest carbon-negative RNG facility, followed by the world's largest carbon-negative ultra-green hydrogen plant. Our sustainable biofuel will be an economic driver for St. John Parish and beyond. We look forward to establishing deep ties with the local community, drawing on the existing world-class workforce, and utilizing Louisiana's exceptional infrastructure to execute on our project. End quote. And up next, Veolia North America, a division of one of the world's largest environmental service companies, released its baseline scope 1 and 2 emissions in a sustainability report this past week. VNA reported only 1,046 kilotons of Scope 1 emissions and only 507 kilotons of Scope 2 emissions in 2023. Those numbers will serve as a baseline for future years. Globally, the company is targeting a 50% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2032 and net zero emissions by 2050. This is the first time it has broken out and reported North American emissions. The company's latest sustainability report also revealed that VNA helped its clients avoid 430,000 tons of greenhouse gas emissions through its services. 
These include municipal water treatment, hazardous waste disposal, and other water, waste, and energy services. And just a reminder, Recyclist is a trademark of Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or you can even set up a personalized presentation by calling 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. And next... BP-owned Archaea Energy recently announced a joint venture with GFL Environmental to open a renewable natural gas plant in Wisconsin. The plant officially came online in August 2024. The plant, which is owned by the joint venture of the two companies, known as Saturn Renewables, is operated by Archaea and is adjacent to the Hickory Meadows landfill owned and operated by a subsidiary of GFL. Starley Sykes, the CEO of Arkea, said, quote, This plant highlights our commitment to investing in communities, decreasing emissions, and bringing lower carbon energy to our customers. End quote. Patrick DeVigi, CEO of GFL, added, quote, GFL is excited to see our second RNG facility come online as part of our investment in growth opportunities that support our sustainability commitments. End quote. The plant is able to process up to 4,800 standard cubic feet of landfill gas per minute and process it into RNG. And up next, we have another story from the EPA. As the organization announced this past week, $117 million will be made available for three new funding opportunities for recycling projects. The agency will award $78 million dollars through the Solid Waste Infrastructure for Recycling Grant Program, including $20 million for tribes and intertribal consortia, and $58 million for local governments below the state level. It will also select a single applicant for a $39 million Recycling Education and Outreach Grant. For that opportunity, EPA is looking for a coalition that will create three projects, a national campaign to reduce consumer food waste, a project to boost compost sales, and a project to educate households on compost. And next, Clean Energy Fuels Corps announced this past week they are launching a program to allow heavy-duty fleets to operate a truck equipped with the new Cummins X15N engine. The first company to participate in the program will be J.B. Hunt Transport Incorporated, one of the largest commercial fleet operators with extensive logistics and transportation services in North America. Andrew Littlefair, the president and CEO of Clean Energy, said, quote, We are honored to have our esteemed collaborators at J.B. Hunt kick off our X15N demo truck program. J.B. Hunt is committed to reducing its carbon footprint and trialing our new renewable natural gas truck will allow them to experience the engine's impressive capabilities, which can meet any demand and has the potential to decarbonize part of its operations, end quote. Greer Woodruff, the Executive Vice President of Safety, Sustainability, and Maintenance at J.B. Hunt, went on to say, quote, We are excited to be the first carrier in Clean Energy's pilot program and get hands-on experience with the Cummins X15N tractor. Vehicles powered by renewable natural gas produce significantly less carbon emissions throughout their life cycle and are more compatible with today's available infrastructure than most competing emissions reduction technologies. End quote. And lastly, JBS USA, not to be confused with the company we just talked about, and Green Gas USA are partnering to produce renewable natural gas at multiple JBS beef and poultry processing facilities across the U.S. By installing Green Gas USA's on-site gas upgrading systems, biogas collected from the wastewater streams of JBS facilities will be purified into pipeline quality RNG. The partnership will begin with initial installations at JBS facilities in Grand Island, Nebraska and Hiram, Utah, and the Pilgrims Sumter, South Carolina facility. 
The collaboration is expected to reduce greenhouse gas emissions at these facilities while improving wastewater operations and local air and water quality and support the renewable energy market through the distribution of renewable natural gas. Wesley Philho, Chief Executive Officer at JBS Foods USA, said, quote, At JBS and Pilgrims, we're committed to reducing the impact of food production by partnering with stakeholders to reduce our carbon footprint. This collaboration with Greenhouse Gas USA is a perfect example of these efforts. This innovative approach takes what was once an unused byproduct of food production and transforms it to offset a significant amount of fossil fuels. This project could be a model for the rest of the industry to follow. End quote. And that will do it for your September 20th News Roundup brought to you by Recyclist, a trademark of Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and we will see you back here next week for another brand new episode of Recyclist. Thank you.